Does cannabis always get you high? What's in it? Cannabis is made up of many different compounds, each of which have different effects. The effect of cannabis on the body therefore depends on the levels of each compound in the plant. The two main compounds are a great example of this. The most abundant and commonly studied active compound in cannabis is delta 9 trans tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC. This compound is medically approved for appetite stimulation during HIV treatment and for reduction of nausea and vomiting during cancer treatment. Cannabidiol, or CBD, has recently been approved for use in treating certain types of epilepsy that previously didn't have effective management strategies. Both compounds, in combination, are approved for relief from nerve pain and symptoms associated with multiple sclerosis. These two compounds have different, sometimes opposing, effects on the body. For example, THC is the main intoxicating compound in cannabis, which means that it alters the user's perception and may temporarily trigger feelings of relaxation, but it may also trigger some frightening experiences. In most people, relaxing effects are experienced at lower THC doses, while higher doses of THC are known to produce feelings of paranoia or acute psychosis. In the majority of people, this subsides in a few hours, once the THC levels diminish. Some people may be especially sensitive to these effects. In people who are at risk for schizophrenia, use of cannabis is associated with an earlier onset of recurring psychotic episodes and an increased risk of developing long-term illness. CBD, on the other hand, isn't intoxicating. Instead, some research shows that it may help with the anxiety and psychosis induced by THC. MRI scans show that parts of the brain are activated by THC and inhibited by CBD, while others are activated by CBD and inhibited by THC. However, these results are only preliminary and they require confirmation in further studies. Because cannabis is a natural compound, it never consists entirely of THC or CBD. Instead, they contain some mixture of the two. And the balance of these compounds affect the user's response to the drug. In cannabis research, a major source of complexity is the change of this balance over time. Average THC levels in the cannabis plant collected by police enforcement have increased threefold, whereas CBD levels, which counteract some of the effects of THC, have decreased in the past 20 years. Because the balance of cannabinoids has changed, the results of some older studies may not be applicable, as they studied a different cannabis from the drug that's available today. Additionally, those numbers only represent averages. Individual forms of cannabis that are available can be very different from the average, and that's what we see in the data. In recent years, there's been much more spread in the THC concentrations, meaning that today there may be a greater chance of being exposed to a higher dose of THC. Additionally, since measurements are only as accurate as the test itself, recently there have been calls for improving and standardizing the process of measuring cannabinoid levels. The user's own body also plays a big role in their response to cannabis, and many of the physiological pathways that affect the response aren't well understood. As pharmacologists, we investigate these issues with two lenses, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. In pharmacokinetics, we consider what the body does to the drug. For example, a pharmacokinetic experiment would be to track how long the drug stays in the body. As a substance travels through the body, various pathways change substances into different forms. Pharmacokinetic differences can cause some users to experience more intense effects or experience these effects for a longer time. During the substance's stay in the body, it interacts with different receptors and pathways, changing the body's behavior. Pharmacodynamic concepts consider what the drug does to the body, like what kinds of receptors are activated by a drug and how these receptors produce their effects. Based on differences in these characteristics between people, brain cells may respond to a greater or lesser degree. For instance, some users may be more prone to relaxing effects, while others might experience more changes in their thinking. Individuals will vary across pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic traits, depending on their genetics, environment, age, and other factors, and this directly changes the effects of a drug. Some users may choose to use cannabis frequently or find it difficult to stop. 
Cannabis use disorder is defined as the continued usage of cannabis, even though it disrupts the user's daily life. We are not yet sure if these differences are related to pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, or to other medical, social, or mental health factors. Cannabis use disorder is associated with anxiety and depression in the long term, but understanding these relationships will require more research. The effects of other cannabinoid compounds are also under intense study by pharmacologists around the world. Like THC and CBD, other compounds could be isolated from cannabis and used in a hospital setting to treat many illnesses. Potentially, we could discover new treatments to illnesses that don't currently have any. On the other hand, this is a field of ongoing research, which means that the negative health effects of these compounds are currently unknown.